Hi, my name is Dave DiBiazio. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Precision Coding Companies. Thank you for joining us today. Also joining us today is Dick Buxton, who is the Director of our Process and Application Engineering at Precision Coding Company. Welcome, Dick. Good afternoon, David. Just to frame this for you a bit, Precision Coding Company is the leading applicator of polymer coatings for guide wires and interventional me uh, medicine in the world. Uh, we work with all the major OEMs and CMOs producing guide wire and other interventional medical um, wire for um, both uh, the United States and around the world. Today we'd like to talk a bit about the coding specifically. There are a lot of questions associated around the coding and our goal here is to help you expedite the choice process of the coding that's best for your platform and also expedite your platform to production. So without further ado, I'd like to ask one of the questions that our customers always ask us about coding and that is, Dick, what is the most lubricious coding that I can apply? Actually, David, it's, it's our aqueous coding. It's PTFE based. Um, the coefficient of friction in, in that application is probably down around a, a 0.9, uh, maybe a 0.8. Um, when you go to a solvent coating, it, it goes up a little bit more of a, a 1, a 1, 1, 2, but still it, it's very lubricious. It reduces the coefficient of friction on the stainless or substrate by 80%. Oh, okay. Very good. So you mentioned, um, some of, um, some of the um, specifications for lubricity. Um, how would you check that? Uh, we have the, the device in-house to check the coefficient of friction on Very the good. guide wire. Very good. So my next question would be, um, is there a minimum coating thickness that's effective for the guide wire? Actually, as long as PTFE is on the substrate, it's effective. Very good. What you will find is the color will vary as the th as the material is thicker. It's a more solid color. So if so, is there a minimum coating thickness to achieve the best color? So our coating tolerance is one to five as a standard. In lighter colors, to maintain a solid color, you'd have to be about two tenths or more. Okay, so one to five tenths and then two tenths or more gives you the best application Correct. of color. Okay, very good. Is there a coating that's best for um, dielectric properties? Uh, there is. Um, um, you're into a different world. <laughs> <laughs> PVDF is our, our standard for dielectric polyamides as well. Mm -hmm. um, there are other materials that would be dielectric. Uh, okay. Again, it depends on the application and the availability of thickness that I can put on it. Okay, very good. Are all the coatings that are applied medical grade coatings? Uh, they are. Um, the ones that we, we, we specify mm -hmm. <laughs> or actually purchase are medical grade. Uh, one of the things that we do do is we do testing or biocompatibility testing on the coatings that we purchase. Uh, the, the, I think the thing that our customers like to understand is when we apply a coating that it's going to pass their bio testing as well. It, it's not just a matter of my, my test is not going to satisfy their need. Oh, okay. Okay. Is there a coating that you would specify for bondability? Um, there is a little difference between aqueous and solvent. Mm -hmm. um, solvent, I, I believe we prefer to put on uh, invasive wires. Okay. Um, it, it does have a polyimid poly binder in it, it, and it does adhere to the substrate much better than the aqueous. Mm -hmm. Aqueous is more of a, uh, a mandrel or an overmold type application versus the solvent. Okay, so, so solvent has its own bind, binder. Correct. And the aqueous, you go through a process to, to make it bind. Correct. Okay, very good. So you mentioned color a little bit earlier as far as coating thickness is concerned. How many colors do we offer? Um, pretty standard in the sense of blue, green, black, yellow. Uh, clear is an option. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific properties that are associated with the different colors or can I use any color? It, it does make a little bit of a difference as far as the colors chosen. Uh, obviously, clear is pure PTFE. It has no pigment. Um, pigment, in, in a way, is uh, almost a contaminant in, in the in the coating, in the sense that it it, it interferes a little bit with the coefficient of friction. Um, the lighter colors require a little bit more load of pigment 
to bring out the brightness of the color. A yellow might be a, a little, little bit more pigment load than a black. Uh, yeah, I, I've heard it described as you have a certain, let's say a test tube, and you have to fill that test tube with um, the actual um, polymer. You have to fill it with a pigment, mm -hmm. and then with whatever your binder or your other associated properties are. And if you add more pigment, you have to take a little bit of polymer out or vice versa. So are there specific colors that you can use that use less pigment that might provide a little bit more lubricity? Uh, obviously, the clear and the black are, are probably the better of the two. Very good. Okay. Are curing temperatures flexible throughout the different coatings? Uh, we follow the recommended guidelines based on the manufacturer of the coating. Mm -hmm. um, common cure temperatures are from 625 to 750, depending on the materials chosen. Understood. Is there a, a, a major difference between the aqueous and the solvent coatings? Um, the aqueous does require a higher cure temperature. It actually sinters in the process, and it's done at a 725-750F cure temperature. Um, the solvent materials do cure at a lower or bond at a lower cure temperature of 625. Okay, would, would you recommend specific coatings for, let's say, um, applications outside of Guidewire? Like, would you use an aqueous specifically for a mandrel, let's say? Or Yes, okay. I, I would, definitely for a mandrel. A mandrel requires the ability for um, a low lubricious surface, uh, non-stick, uh, over molding is preferred with aqueous. But you would recommend solvents for guide wire in most cases? Invasive, yes, definitely. Very good. Okay. And have, have, have we done bio testing on the coatings? Uh, we do. Um, in fact, our own internal blend, we have done multiple times the mm -hmm. bio testing. Uh, we do bio testing on store bio items as well. Um, but in the end, it's the medical device that has to pass the bio test. Mm -hmm. It's not just my coating. It, it's nice to know that you're starting off with a, a coating that's going to pass the test, and, and we, we definitely make sure that what we're applying will pass. Very good. Um, is there flexibility in the coating? In other words, um, if I'm putting it on a, on a platform that's going to have a lot of turns going through a torturous vessel, will I have any problem with the coating flexing along with the substrate? No, it will not. Okay. And is that because of the um, coating thickness that we apply, or is it um, a function of the coating itself? Uh, it, it's a combination of both. I mean, mm -hmm. the coating itself is not applied in any real thickness or mm -hmm. layers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty much applied in a one-layer application. Mm -hmm. So it adheres to the substrate and, and bonds and will make it through your torturous path. Yeah, and it's only generally uh, one and a half, two ten thousandths of an inch, so it's able to flex pretty well. Correct. Very good. Well, Dick and I hope that this information was helpful for you in choosing the coating for your particular application. You certainly can, can uh, look at additional information on our website. And if you look below, you'll see our website, which is www.precisioncoding.com. There's a wealth of information there for you, not only on guide wires, but other applications as well. And also on some of the other services that we provide for coding um, guide wires, medical instruments, um, surgical instruments, you name it. Thanks again for taking the time and we hope to see you again soon.